Hey traders, Nick Sheen here. Wanted to look at Tesla. Um, just do a little blurb. Let me start with the disclosures. Um, technically, I use the technicals as far as for investing. I'm not a technical analyst. I have a lot of friends who are, and they're awesome at what they do. I am not an SEC expert. I'm not a lawyer. So this is just my pure opinion, just based on observation. All right. So this week, obviously, we've had um, a crap storm stirred up by Elon Musk. And also, another disclosure, I am not a fan of Tesla, the company. I have traded it only from the long side, even though I don't like it. I don't like Elon himself. I'm not a fan. And I've been outspoken about it out in the media. Um, any articles I've written, any sh show appearances on Benzinga, it's all been... Uh, I'm always critical of the company fundamentals. However, the reason I trade it for the long side is because I think the upside potential is so muddled. They have their fingers in so many things that nobody knows what the heck, how to evaluate it. So until you kill all the upside potentials, uh, then it's kind of like Bitcoin. It's going to be here. It's going to be value is not an issue. It's just the hope of the things working out. And for the short term, you can't kill all of these pluses at one time. Um, Elon leaving the company, like leadership, like if God forbid he dies or something like that, uh, that would be a problem. Other than that, the upside story is muddled. So you would need months and months and months of bad news for it to be dead from the perspective of all these fans that are stepping in to buy dips. Um, now, conversely, it needs several mega miracles in order for it to grow into the evaluation that everybody gives to it now here. But this is just pertaining to the crazy whipsaw action in the stock market. Now, this is a daily chart. All right. So on the face of it, all right, it's a violent, a lot of lines. Each set of lines means something. Just ignore the lines. We'll get to it. All right. So I'm supposed to believe that this is a chart in trouble. Now, Whatever Elon tweeted, said, legal, illegal, consensus is that he didn't break the law personally unless he actually traded on the note. Like he pumped it, dumped a stock, and then he's going to go to jail. It's not going to take away the fact that he placed a b bid, a put under the stock because he said it's his company. He owns a crap load of it. He wants it public. So if it falls, there's a buyer in there. Whoever that person is or isn't, it doesn't matter. He knows how to bring money. It, bringing money to buy it out is not going to be a problem. So the fact that I'm supposed to freak out and not trade it, uh, and CNBC trading Fast Money Show, they couldn't come up with a, a trade. A bunch of traders on a show called Fast Money. If it was investment advice money, then fine. I understand not to touch it from an investment perspective. From a trading perspective, it is, this is like a dream stock right now. It's, uh, you know, they say, I want volatility so I can make money. Well, you got a crap load of volatility in this one, buddy. And you say no touch as a trader, that's surprising. So anyway, luckily made money in the short term. I got admittedly lucky because I jumped on the headline. I saw the patterns and they played out. Now, I can still make money in the intermediate uh, um, time frame, but back to the point of, is this a stock in trouble? And let's revisit it. This is a daily chart, okay? So it has been setting, first of all, they reported earnings. It was supposed to be crappy, but it did. They, the, the, this is pre-Elon tweet. It jumped up, and then the tweet got it the juice to get up to 380 or whatever. It is almost an all-time high. Maybe it is. I can't tell. I can't see the left. The point is, um, the stock moved from the price action itself based on the merits of whatever they said in the earnings call. Deliveries, whatever it was, I can't remember now, regardless. So there is a bottom there anyway. But there is an open gap. So there is a threat in the short term. But let's evaluate this threat. So two things can happen here. I have higher lows and lower highs. So something has got to give over here. When you have higher lows, lower highs, you get tension building. So two things can happen, obviously. You can break the tension up and try to revisit that one, and we'll see what happens if you break through that one, or you fade, and how far do you go? So if the fade happens, worst case scenario, I see 315-ish, but if nothing happens, the meander, there's th support at 45, and then about a 20 bucks layer below it. 
So it's not a hard line in the sand. It's plus or minus, and it's worked out so far. Now, if I wanted to get a little more granule, gr granule, and let's see here, if I get to the hello platform is slow, if I get to a sixty-minute chart, all right. So we get a head and shoulders in the making, and this would bring that twenty dollars below the forty-five I talked about, and we'll probably cover most of this. I'm fine with that. So using options, you can profit from all of the stuff. So back to a daily chart. So what if it was not a daily chart? What if it was longer term? Let's go to one week. So that's a weekly chart, even cl less clutter. So let's think about it from an open mind. Forget the name. Is this a company in trouble? Is this a chart in trouble? So you got, let's mark it up. So this is a weekly chart. So every candle is one week. So it hit a high here, it came close to it, it failed, um, meandered. So this zone right here is very well consolidated. That's why they said floor on 300 and that one day here when it fell. By the way, sold puts somewhere around here, made money on that one from the long side. Uh, so then retook that neckline of 300, because it's a round number, attacked the high, failed, a little worse, this poke got us up there. So for all intents and, intents and purposes, and all, so it came back into the consolidated zone. So to me, that 300 is still there as a psychological good floor. If it fails, okay, so th this, this was the action, and it came close to it just before the earnings. So this is not a clearly uh, in trouble chart, in my opinion. They're testing a floor line, they're testing a, above. So well consolidated zone. And so you have a whole bunch of people that want to fight it out between these two lines. So what happens here? Now we're one headline away from breaking either of those two lines. Take the headlines out, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to meander and then eventually do that. That's my opinion, my opinion. A headline could expedite that one or break it. And if it does break it, it comes to here. And if it does lose that, this is a. So now I identified where it's trading, headline or not. And then headline or not, what could happen, up or down? Take the headlines out, it's going to be in or higher because that's what the markets are doing unless the entire market falls. So this particular chart, to me, is not in trouble. Now, headlines are inflammatory. I am not an expert in the issues at hand but i understand enough to know that he personally broke some rules maybe so he personally has to pay for those mistakes maybe and the fact that this week late yesterday i think they started talking on cnbc that uh, the board is going to ask him to recuse himself so everybody's hearing the board is going to ask him to recuse himself not to step away from the company. That's an extreme step for them to say that because if he's the brains, they don't want to do that. But to recuse himself from this discovery process of finding a buyer and what, what price and if they should sell it or take it private. So because then he has so much of it that it becomes a potential um, conflict of interest. So him stepping away from it is going to have to happen regardless whether he did it by tweet or not. I bet you anything because he owns so much of it. They can't let him decide for the whole company. It would be too much influence. So they're messing up the headlines and talking about all these pitfalls and catastrophes. So the, take it with a grain of salt. The media is in the business of grabbing our attention with headlines. So whatever the news is, they want to write it in the most inflammatory uh, way possible to grab the attention. And then they spend the whole day, a whole week, a period of time hashing out the potential worst and best case scenarios of this. Rarely the best case. They always say, oh my gosh, the worst case scenario. A few people out there say the best case scenario, hey, this is just passes and this too shall pass. So is the company broken? Not for this reason. It may be broken because they spend a whole ton of money and they don't they, they can't meet their deadlines as far as productions but not for this reason the fact that he tweeted something all he did is when all this gets settled is he's going to personally probably pay for the mistake or the if there was an infraction legally uh, but the bid that he placed in the market or the 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 put that he placed below the stock i think will stay so if you're an options trader, there are quite a few ideas to be done there. All right, this is my two cents. Again, not a recommendation. My two cents on how a stock is moving and inside of a um, 
a bullish market. So, whoops, long week, sorry. So back to the the market in general. This is the the cues. These are the cues. So the, the Nasdaq, one red tick after eight or nine green ticks, and CNBC experts on a trading show are starting to call the top. Or at least opening the question. Oh, you got to step away from this market. One red tick after eight <laughs> green ones, and, and with you know the lira, the Turkish lira that's going to collapse the world. Suddenly, Turkey is the belly button of the world. One red tick, and they're ready to pull the plug on everything. I'm not a subscriber. P and Ls of companies are great, the major companies, and. Uh, the the small caps basket of 2000 stocks barely moved today in fact they were green up most of the day they may have closed flattish i'm not sure but um the fact that the thesis overall thesis for the market is still up within that tesla is not in trouble ex exceptionally so to where it's a short in fact it's a difficult short in my opinion so if i wanted to short it which i don't i would use puts buy them instead of just trying to short the stock outright because that could be a major disaster even the big pros the whales are having troubles with it and they they're so upset they're talking about bathing suits or whatever the heck they were talking about shorts uh, actual short shorts so if i was to short it or if my brother wanted to short it i'd say <laughs> learn options and do it in the options market don't sell the stock short because that would be insanity if i buy a stock the most I can use is 100%, lose is 100%. If I short a stock, I can lose money until no end, until the stock stops rising. So anyway, Tesla, I'm long, cautiously so. I have profits already in pocket, so I do have conviction from that perspective. I can suffer a few losses and be okay. Nick signing out. If you have any questions, sellspreads at gmail.com.